Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. It's been a while, but I've got another repot to do in this late spring season. Just this past weekend, I was a part of the Minnesota Bonsai Society Novice Workshop. So it's our introduction workshop where we let uh, folks in May have a juniper to work on and repot. These are the trees that were discarded. No one wanted these particular trees. I ended up picking up one of them for myself. I have to figure out which one that's going to be. We'll take care of these trees here uh, until our next workshop. So I will be uh, making sure that they uh, do good things over the summer. We won't need these trees again until September. So these are the Brocumbens Nana, um, also labeled as the Japanese Garden Juniper. And we use these because they're super forgiving. We're going to be able to repot. We're going to be able to do a little bit of wiring and we'll do some pruning as well. So it's why we pick this variety for folks to get their first exposure to some bonsai work. Got a couple of really big ones with some possible semi-cascade branches. A couple of smaller varieties here. A couple super thick. Now when we work with uh, the repotting, we are getting late in spring here. It's uh, the uh, mid to third section of May, in the third week of May here. And we want to get these junipers repotted uh, in a lot of pines and a lot of trees before the buds go out, right? And for this particular variety, we want to try to repot before these buds really start to elongate. So these are super full of all kinds of new buds that are really wanting to push out. So they're starting to elongate. So I want to get these repotted now so then they can have the rest of the year to push out with a, a little bit less stress. So any meeny miny mo, I've got to pick a tree there so we can get to work. We've had a blisteringly dry season for May. We had 85 degrees on May 1st. We haven't had a lot of rain since and just today, last night into today, we had some rain. But the temps are at night are above 50 now for the next two weeks, well into the 50s and even 60s for lows. We're hitting 70s for highs. And I've taken some of my tropical plants from the plant room outside. Here's a couple of workshop trees again from this past weekend. Those are our sample trees. I've got my variegated ficus forest, my jade, the Thanksgiving cacti, more variegated ficuses that'll probably go into a bigger forest planting, melon seed ficus, and some other uh, plants that we just have here at the house that are gonna go in the ground. Perfect day today. The sun is behind clouds, but it wants to be really bright. This side of my garage does not get direct sunlight. So make sure when you're bringing your plants out this time of year, my tropicals, you put them in the sun, these leaves are gonna fry right off, right? They're gonna have a lot of damage, a lot of burn. So they're on this side of the garage, so they get to the little bit of the morning sun from the east, and then uh, it goes behind the garage, and then this is indirect sun for the rest of the day. So they will acclimate themselves to being outdoors, and in a couple of weeks, I'll put them in some full sun. It's been a while since I put a video out on the YouTube channel because I was preparing myself for the MBS workshop, which went really, really well. We met some fantastic people who are hopefully going to become bonsai enthusiasts for life, and uh, a lot of fun was had. We saw over uh, 75 people over the two-day event and getting their first taste of bonsai work. And so what I thought I would do was work on the very tree that we gave them very tree that they get when they sign up for this worksheet worksheet workshop is the procumbens nana and so i'm going to follow their path by repot it within a couple of days when they repotted it and then i'm going to keep notes and i'm going to share notes with the email connection and see how everybody's trees are doing do a lot of before and after shots so here's my before shot right there one of the first things we said in the workshop is make sure you take a before shot. So that's the uh, Bacumans Nana in the nursery pot. And then we have to get to work. So we talked at the workshop about how do you even start? We often talk about finding a front to our tree. And so when you look at this massive foliage, we have no idea what the front's gonna be. And the only way we can do that is to start to clean out the tree. So we're gonna look inside, we're gonna cut out any dead branches, 
branches for me that I know I just won't need in the design if they're too low on the trunk. We also then want to see where the trunk is going to connect with the soil for where for that nabari, that buttress. I want to see where this trunk is going to hit the soil. So I'm going to take it out of the pot and we're going to raise it up a little bit on the pot upside down um, and we're going to see if we can see the trunk line of this thing. I have no idea. Part of the fun of getting nursery stock, although when I'm at the nursery, I do go and I look and I feel for the nabari, I feel for the trunk, I try to dig down a little bit, but these are so bushy that uh, it was really hard to tell. So we're gonna go ahead and dig into this thing and uh, see what kind of trunk we have and clean it up and get ready for the repot. The Nana is out of the pot. It's up on top high so I can see it. And I really still can't see a single thing in here. There's so much growth. So we're just gonna kind of tease away the top part of the uh, soil line to find where this nabari is gonna be. Where does that thick part of the trunk meet up with the start of those surface roots? So we wanna start to see where the roots are gonna be exposed. We might even cut a few of those very top roots out if they're thin and, and we can go down a little bit further to a bigger flare. But yeah, we have to go down and find all that first. So one of the challenges the folks had at the workshop was this part. We had one guy that he affectionately called his tree the octopus tree because there were big branches going every which way and he had to really uh, clear out his tree and really find what might be the front, what might be the back, what branches should be just cut off because they're just not needed. So that took a good hour plus. This was a three hour workshop. And we got there with him. We made sure it worked. So another reason to start at the top too is you don't want to just come here and take all of this off necessarily in, in case some of these roots on top are kind of weak or dying back or not very strong but they're all down here and if you cut them off all down here first and then see what's left and you don't have any roots you will not have the roots to support this structure anymore. I made that mistake with my first mugo pine. I told the story at the workshop and if my mugo pine was right here I had all of this and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take the saw method. I'm going to pick the halfway point. I'm just going to saw right through the roots. And I did that. But all the roots were down low on the trunk because it was buried pretty low in the pot. And then the roots came back up and on top. So all these roots here were deceiving because they were growing from down here. But when I cut here, I ended up cutting 90% of my roots right off the tree. And when you're talking about a pine, conifer, 90% root damage disappearing, gone, cut off. Uh, yeah, my tree died. I don't even know how many weeks it lasted. I tried. I tried to salvage. Wasn't gonna work. I'm teasing away the top of the, of the tree still. I'm getting a lot of roots that are spreading out nice and wide, and there's a lot up here. So I'm pretty much at this root base, uh, or where, where the roots start here from the tree. So I only have about this much between the lowest branch on the tree and where the roots start. So not a lot of trunk line at the moment. Now again, this one particular root right here, this is sticking up and outward. I might just end up cutting that one off. It's connected to this one as well. I've got so many roots on this tree. And we found out in the workshop with all the trees that we got this year, the root systems were huge, just so many roots. So cutting off a few roots, again, is not gonna be detrimental to this tree. Um, we are cutting more than we would like, but um, because we're gonna try to get it into a smaller pot, but this tree has plenty of roots to thrive and to continue. And wanna welcome all the people from the uh, Minnesota Bonsai Society Novice Workshop who uh, have joined the uh, YouTube channel, Subscribe Sense. Love to see you here. Um, make sure you're uh, saying hi, sending some comments, asking more questions, and uh, we are all learning together. I learned so much this past weekend on the trees and the shapes and the varieties, and um, working with people was fantastic. We had a really fun time this past weekend. So a big welcome to all the MBS members who have now learned about their first tree and uh, are uh, helping support uh, Dave Bonsai. Thank you so much. So 
We have a lot of roots. We are gonna be able to get rid of a lot down here for sure, we know that. And I knew that, because I knew this tree from the workshop. But now there's gonna be all kinds of branches in here in the low section of this tree that I probably am not gonna want right away. I've zoomed in closer for you now. It's a little dark still under the canopy. That just shows you how thick that canopy is. And this is a good explanation of why we say we thin out the tree and we clean out the tree. Because no sunlight is getting down in here. The sun right now is just above my head, just behind the garage, and so it's not direct sun. But all the fairly light uh, through the cloud deck right now is trying to reach down here, but it's super dark down in here. The light's just not gonna get there, so we have to thin out some branches. Um, but we gotta do that um, in a careful way. So we talked about at the uh, workshop with the folks that um, we don't wanna go ahead and clean out just all the top facing branches and the bottom facing branches right off the get go because we don't know how this is gonna be placed in the pot yet. So we definitely try to get it in the pot as soon as possible when we can, see a, when we can kinda consider a front. So then we can see the design of the tree uh, and then we can make our decisions on what we cut. Because one thing you'll have to be careful of is that if you took this tree right now and started cutting all the branches like this one that's sticking straight up in the air, um, or there's one over here that's down right here, well, when I put it in the pot and change the direction a little bit and wire it, what if all of a sudden this downward branch becomes the sideways lateral branch? So we have to be careful with that. So we want to put it in the pot as soon as possible. Once it's in the pot, it's got its shape and uh, directionality, then we can start looking at clipping up some of the top ones and the down facing branches to clean up our tree. Right now I'm just getting rid of some of these first surface roots that I'm seeing. And right here is a good example. This tree is growing from down low in the tree in the root system, way down low. This tree is not gonna serve me well. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that one out. We just do not need that. And we'll clean up more as we go along. We have a lot of branches down here. I see a fair amount that are of varying sizes and a lot of those lower branches have some death on them because they're low down and they're not getting a lot of sunshine. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my glasses off so I can see a nice, nice amount of tree bark there. Okay, so there are roots all the way up to these branches. These first set of branches, there are roots. And so I'm gonna trim a couple of these roots off. So here's an example of what I just cut off. That's a fairly decent sized root. That could have been a nice flaring root, but it's so high up on the trunk. And I have some decent uh, movement here, a little bit of Nabari forming down here. I wanna go down as low as I can. And then again, if there's anything dead down here, I'm gonna cut it off. I think this branch is just too low for me. This one right here. This is super low, there's only foliage way out here. It's long and skinny. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that one off. There. So now we can see under that tree a little bit more. I'm gonna spin it around because it's got a lot of hanging branches over here. So I have, a, I have a couple of thick branches. One comes up over here, one comes back over here, and of course there's one in the direction we just turned it around from. I'm still not seeing a lot of trunk from this side. One of the things we have to be careful with these uh, really nice flexible branches is that we don't go too crazy up and down because a lot of the movement, we lost a few branches on the workshop because people wanted to go into this and, and bring it way up and then we'd get a weak point and it would eventually break off. But then again, most trees that started like this lost over half their branches. So losing a branches, branch or two early on wasn't the end of the world for most of the trees. Again, I'm going underneath. This was a dead branch, just a little tiny dead branch, getting that one off. I see another root that's growing parallel with branch. So we've got some roots that are super high up on this Nabari that are just not gonna serve us very well. Um, only because we have so many more roots down below, I can try to make this a little bit lower and see more of the trunk line. So from first glance, It seems like this Nabari, or the front of this tree, might be somewhere in this direction. So from your angle, you can see some branches maybe going off this way. There are some branches going off this way, and I can see part of the trunk line. When I spin it around, on this side I've got 
this branch right here, this branch on this side, they're kind of opposite. I might even cut both of those out because this is a really big winding branch. But this in front of us would block everything. So this might be better in the back. We might be able to lift this up and twist it around a little bit and get some funky movement. There's some dead stuff in the middle here, way in the center of this tree. So now upon closer look this way, the tree goes almost straight up and then has a little curve that way. So that's good to see. So if I spin it around, I should see the opposite somewhere. And this side I just see mainly from left to right movement. So there are two branches right here growing super close together. One, two. And they're still really low on the tree. I'm going to cut them both off because I don't want them. And I think they're too low to have a gin. So I'm just cutting them off as close as I can to the trunk so it'll heal over nicely. Oh, there was another root that was up above one of those branches. All right. Cleaning up some knobs from over older branches. All right. I could probably put these into some soil and have some cuttings. So now after cutting that off, here is that big curving swooping branch. This could be a cascade style. The tree is leaning that way. I could put it this way and have it come swooping this way. But this whole main branch right here is right in our face, right here, so you guys can see it. So that would be better on the back side. And I don't know what's on this side. A couple of branches coming right at me. So this now is where I have to dig into the center of this tree, which there is definitely no light getting in here. And so if I can get a close up of this in post-production, right there. You can see in there, all that brown leaves here on this side by this finger over here, that's all dead branches, right? Look at that, all the brown dead, got a couple live in there, but there's some more dead branches. All of these have not seen the sun in a long, long time. So they're just coming right off, just with fingers. We'll cut a couple closer to the trunk with the scissors that didn't come out as easily. And we've got a lot more dead stuff in here that will fall off in a little bit. Now we did get rain last night, so these are a little moist today, which is great. The soil's falling apart really nice for me. And I am not gonna worry about roots drying off. And there's another way to see all those dry, a little bit of dirt from my hands from repotting here right now, but this is all dry stuff that just really gonna just pluck right off. There's some dry stuff in there. But now I'm trying to look up into that to see what angle I might go with. So when I tipped it up, I've got one branch going up backwards and then up forwards and a really nice curve over here. Then I got that one that goes up away from us a little bit then back towards us and then over to the left and that's that big possible cascade branch and then back here there's one back here that's about uh, an inch or so down from this junction and then I do have one here that's closer to the bottom the question is if I'll take that bottom one off but it has a split so these two trees right now are growing out like this they're kind of curving out like this, if you can kind of see that, like this. So it's not very, not very nice of a front right there. But if I turn it off to the side here and move some branches over, now I see that right to left movement, right over here and then it comes back to the left. And so I can kind of keep that as my front and I would want to keep this branch for sure, but maybe not the back one. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make this my front, okay. 
So now that I picked my front, super hard for you to see uh, exactly what I'm seeing. But let me get rid of some more dirt and then we'll put it in the pot and give you another angle. from the nursery pot to this potential bonsai pot, we're looking pretty good. So, looks looks most naturally like the tree will fit in this way with all this growth over here and it looks nice and full, full over here. I can remember which direction I'm thinking about for the front. I think it was this side. Look at all that big bark. Because this tree goes up straight for a little while, then it has this curve to the left with this big branch. So there's the curve right there. You can see that curve a little bit, kind of hard to tell. That is a really nice looking movement there, but it blocks all our view in there. So now I can even see more of these older shoots that are dying. See if there's a different angle I can do to this tree. We think that's going to be the angle. So I'm going to push it off to the left side of the pot, and then we're going to angle it. Is it going to be this way? And let this branch come up over here. Well, maybe this way more. So as a newcomer to bonsai, the folks in the workshop would get to the stage and really not know what to do with some of these, this, this stage. Like, what am I looking at? What, what should stay and what should go? So it was fun to see their journey. And it's fun to see the light bulb moments when they would take off a branch and go, oh, yeah, that looks great, or it opened it up, and fantastic. I'm having a real hard time deciding what way this is going to go. So let me get a little screen in there, let me get some wires in there, and then we'll uh, put this thing in there. Or is it going to be in this one? I think we're going to use that one. Yeah, we're going to use this one. I got some uh, pre-made screen in there now, we just need some wire. Something like that. So I'm gonna turn around backwards. I do have one rice, nice root right here. This one was cut off. We're gonna cut that a little bit shorter. There we go. This one comes out and goes down. I don't wanna damage that root. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the front of the tree wire and put it underneath some of this wire through some of this soil right to the back here okay and where they meet in the back i'm going to go ahead and give them that first initial twist i'm going to go ahead and cut off the extra
And as we told all our workshop folks to do, we're going to grab that, lift up and twist. It was nice to hold the trees in place for folks so they could really get a good twist. And when you lift up and twist down, the twist goes right down into the trees, right down to the root system, and it's going to give a nice secure. And then this front wire over here is going to come over to this side. I've been tiptoeing my way through all of this massive foliage trying to see what we're going to keep and what we're not going to keep. I ended up taking down this uh, branch right here that came way around out front. We took it down to this last one right here. But this one right here is not going to get any light until we get rid of some of that. There was a branch that came out down here, but it crossed this branch. So the branch was my finger right here and it crossed and so it didn't look good. I took that one off and I've been kind of plucking away at it trying to see what I'm going to keep and not keep. There's a lot of dead stuff in the middle, small fine stuff. But here's our next conundrum. This right here is covering this branch right here, but it's got a lot of lovely foliage. It's super thick, but it has this nice movement over here now. So here's a new leader. Here's a new leader. I should take all of this off if I can find a spot. And I'm sure I can. I'll go back and see. I might even, might even be able to go back. Let's go back to here first. Oh, I just took off one of the leaders. But I'm not worried because I still have this one back here and this one right here. So that was a little bit deeper than I wanted to go by just an inch. You take off a little bit more. And then now we opened up the tree up front here. We've got all this growth up here. The sun will reach some of this at the moment. And we might even be able to wire this up and back a little bit for a secondary, uh, a higher pad of some sort. And this branch right here is coming from way back here. So I might be able to just kind of slowly manipulate it up and over, over time and have some movement that way. And there's all kind. There's a couple of. Here's those branches right here now. That because of the design of the tree, this one is straight down, right here. It's kind of straight down. Let's we'll get rid of that one. This one is straight down. Let's get rid of that one. We've got a branch right here. You can see it maybe right there. As we look at the front of the tree. This branch back here is growing into the tree. We don't want any branches growing into the tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that one off. It's going back into the tree. There's some great movement back there. We just can't see it yet. And that is some fun stuff. That's this great big long one too. Well, we're gonna have to see if we can wire some of this up and make some kind of nice little cascade with that. Semi-cascade. So right now, as the tree looks, this is way too heavy for all this stuff up here. Taking it off would be the best thing. Unless, again, I can just bring it up. You see, if you bring it up, you see less of that heaviness. And I might be able to bring it around. There's that branch from the back. Here it is from the side. Beautiful branch. Is it going to fit in the design of this tree? You know, if I bring this branch up and curve it like this, which I can totally do with wire, it looks a little unnatural. So I don't know that I want to do that. So again, this, this is almost like a whole separate tree back here. It's way too big. It takes away from this design. Though this is a cascade style, it goes left to right in a way, or semi-cascade. Is that too much? If I lift this up, you can see I have this little branch right here. That could take over for this someday if I needed some filling back there. Um, it's almost like a pad already. So the big decision is, do I keep that cascading style or do I leave it, uh, do I take it up? And it looks like a much better tree up. So there it goes. And what I might do 
is bring this closer around like this and make a gin back here. We'll wire it and, and have a gin sticking up in the air. We'll see how we like that. And then this one will grow and get thicker to show a nice pad behind for depth. So yeah, I might wire that one up. So, we might get a gin going here. So when you're making a gin, remember we can always wire a gin into place. Make it bigger than you think. And then you can always cut it back. But if we take wire here and we go like this and bring this way up here, like it was growing up like the rest of the stuff and then it has some death, death on it. So you can't see the gin until you do something like this. Right now it's a live vein, but if we take that off and it looks dead, we've got this uh, old, old branch here that didn't survive. So if it didn't survive, we don't want much growth on it. Around the elbow part here, just gonna cut it out some more. And this is a tree branch that just didn't make it for whatever reason. So let's go ahead and get our uh, pliers and we'll go ahead and do the gin. We're just going to crack crack the bark off. Go up the side. And then when it's wet like this, it comes right off. And I want to make sure I have a nice uh, I'm going to cut it around this part right here so we don't make it deeper than we want it to go. So a real nice sharp blade of any kind. We can scrape that off. And so there's our gin. So this is the back of the tree. This was that long cascade possibility. I decided against the cascade. You can't really see it too much this way from the front. If you do open it up a little bit, you can see the gin back there. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop it up right here. So we're going to go ahead and try to wire that branch. So in order to wire that branch, I still have to do some more cleaning because we have a lot, a lot of foliage on here. I have the wire where I want it. So I'm going to try to make this bend first on this front part of the tree. I'm going to support, support the, the wiring with the hand here and curve up. And curve out. And then curve up. And then curve out. And then there's my movement. And then bring it back down like that. So now this branch has some sunlight. We'll hope that this branch can do um, 
some, some growing. I've got another little bud down lower here. I'm going to leave that. And then what I'll do is I'm going to certainly clean out the tip a little bit here. I don't want things growing straight up and down. I'm going to cut off the terminal bud up here. We got some real thick branching in here, so we got lots of photosynthesis ready to happen. We want to make it a little bit smaller, more compact here. We'll see what which branches uh, do well on that one. We got a little droopy one here. We'll see. I might be able to wire this down over like this a little bit and give it some movement. So now we have the gin. So we're gonna follow it back. And based on where the wire is, I can bring this up even further. And if this happens to break or die, the damage isn't gonna be the end of the world because we're, we're making it look dead anyway. So remember when I told you to make the gin as large as you can? By moving this here, I lost most of the visual sight of my gin. So we're gonna have to go ahead and try to crank it up even more. Like that. So as I laid this branch back here for the gin, there was a whole bunch of branches that were just now kind of pointing down or growing in. So I just cleaned up some of those branches in here so we can just clean up this gin area. Even though it's in the back, we'll get the tree grown back to more like what it would grow. So this right here will be that pad that'll kind of come out here. We might have to wire this one over here. And this guy here, we can just thin out because it's kind of, it's kind of fighting for the vision, vision of the back with that gin. So we don't want to hide the gin completely. So just a little bit of thinning out here. So if you have a path to that gin, you'll be able to see that gin a lot more. So I like how you can see the gin back there. I like how you can see one of the branches back in there. The left side is still a little thick. So I'm not sure how I can clean up that left side to make sure we can see some more of that. But it's kind of a fun looking tree now. It's a little bit more broom style. You don't have as much of that, uh, that uh, con conical shape. But that's where this maybe died. And if there was branches up here, this would make that kind of triangle shape. Um, So how can I thin up a little bit of this to get a little bit more view through the tree? I'm coming in here and cleaning out some of the bottom branches that are back here that you can't really see to make more of a up. All the, all the branches go uplifting, up high. This one right here still has this big clump right here that if we take this off, I don't know if we take that off or not. Or is this still too much in the way, which it probably is. If I take off the terminal bud here a little bit. If I take a couple of these droopy ones away. This is the curve, I want to leave that at the moment. There we go, there's a couple back here. There we go. As I continue to peek at the tree, now it's at that point where, thinking back to the workshop, wondering what we told our students, what are you gonna do with these branches that are left? Do I have too much foliage for the root mass down below, or have I not cut off enough? I can see down into my tree in a couple of spots. Um, I've thinned out a little bit everywhere, but it's still pretty thick. But Many of us, uh, or I should say many of the Minnesota Bonsai Society folks, 
have talked about keeping more foliage in these repots from a nursery pot, let, let all this photosynthesis happen and send all those nutrients down into the, um, or all the starches and sugars up and down through the, through the root system. So we need this foliar mass to really pick up that sun and photosynthesize. So I might err on the side of caution and call it quits here in just a little bit. I still don't like this, and this is dangling now, so I don't know if it's just gotten weak. So I don't know what's going to happen with that, but I got a whole new bud growing right there. But uh, if I could wire this down maybe, down and behind here with a little curve. This still is a little bit in our way here. I don't see the whole structure of the tree because of this one and this one. So I got some decisions to make yet. So I have it on the turntable here for you. Here is the proposed front of the tree. And as we spin it around, we see our gin in the back. The branch that was shooting all up and wild and crazy died off for some reason. And that's all I'm gonna do for this tree right now. I think I'm kind of at that point where, you know, you're looking at a tree, you're looking at a tree, and there's a time where you have to just kind of step back and say, you know what, let's just be done for now. Let's let this thing grow this summer, and then maybe we'll do a little bit of nipping and tucking in the fall. So, the first initial styling of the Workshop Bonsai Japanese Garden Juniper, otherwise known as the Procumbens Nana, there's the tree for today. So my first update for today is going to be the Siberian Pine. We put this thing in a new pot a few weeks back. And now we can look at the growth. All the buds have turned into foliage, nice and fresh elongating and liking it. The Siberian fir. The Taylor Eastern white or red cedar, I think it's the white cedar. And I did a repot a long, long two months ago or more. And I said the one tree I had done so much to it that I thought I killed the tree. All the brown color is starting to bud out into green. Look at that. So just when you thought your tree was not doing so well, life, growth, that's still alive. A tree is never done unless it's dead in bone's eye. Is that correct? This one's not gone yet. Unfortunately, one of the viburnums that had that maple grown in it hasn't done anything. If I have a clip from that uh, episode, I can show you real quick here. There were hardly any roots on this guy. Because... And look at that. It is. The maple tree is most of the roots in this system. So you never know what you're going to get in a pot. But then that makes it even more nerve wracking about this. There's just not a lot of roots on here. So this could have a really tough time uh, surviving. Um, what I'm going to do to it. <laughs> because the maple was sucking up all the energy from that pot and this root system was pretty dismal. And uh, the result is a pretty dismal tree that's not doing anything. All those little buds you're seeing on the Katoni Aster. So of the three or four Katoni Asters I did back in the spring, the flowers are coming, growth is still good. Should be a good year for the Katoni Asters. That one right there is leafed out really nicely. Got some movement on that lower trunks there. Who knows what's going to happen with that viburnum. I'll have to look uh, see which one that is. I'll put the name on the uh, final edit. It's either the Mohican. I can't remember. It escapes me right now. Haven't showcased the uh, lilac bushes in quite a long. So these are like 30 year old lilac bushes that were dug out of the ground. They were just kept in the back, not even buried, and they started to uh, send out more shoots. So I said, hey, let's throw them in a pot. And I've done some work on them. You can go back and look at the uh, playlist. Deadwood features. I had some die back because of some critters, but uh, yeah, we've got a couple of old gnarly looking trunks with some growth. I think next year we'll get some lilac flowers. 
I'm hoping. That'll be year three. Here we have forest number two, Minnesota forest number two, and look at the growth on this guy. He's looking a little bit crazy though, huh? We did have that one branch going over here that's poofing out real nice. Um, not even sure exactly. This is not um, the tree I thought it was. So it's either a cottonwood tree um, or um, it's got the leaves like a birch or beech, it looks like to me in a way. Um, but I had a cottonwood in a, in a nursery pot. That might be it. Still growing way left, but we've got some growth down below. So I'll be able to cut all that off and let that come up. Huge maples. These were maples in the end. Huge maple leaves. We don't like the proportions there, but we'll cut back. We'll defoliate. We'll cut back. We do have the poplars in the middle, though. See the leaves just kind of popping there in the in the wind, right there. Quaking aspen, poplar, and in the back. And then the maple that came free from that viburnum I just showed you a while back. That one's doing nice. And look at those nice leaves, huh? That looks more like a Japanese maple than a typical maple that I'm showing you, like this big leaf, right? Look at that. So I'll be curious what, do, what that does this year. And then in the front of the forest, we have all those uh, Siberian elms there. And down back here is another one. So, oh, well, I can't forget the pines in the back. Look at how beautiful and lush they are. They just shot out a ton of new shoots. This one's our tall and skinny one. We want these to be super tall and skinny like the uh, uh, pine trees way up north in Minnesota. Not so worried about the thickness in the middle and the bottom, but we'll do more of that trimming for next year. But it's kind of a mess right now and some big leaves, but everything's alive in that one, so I'm super excited. Can you see that little dot in the middle of your picture there on that leaf? Got some maple, ma maple? How about some maple gall? Have you ever had maple gall in your trees? I've done a little reading on the maple gall and it's just gonna sit there and reproduce a little bit and not even destroy the leaves that much and it shouldn't affect the plant that much. But I did cut all the leaves that had most of them on there. I cut them off and got rid of them. But this is Minnesota forest number one in the, the uh, wall clock pot. We only have one death in the back where the critters got it. You can see the curvy branch back there, the trunk. That one is not growing any leaves, but we got the big tall poplar in the back with the leaves shuddering in the wind. We got some ashes that are surviving, the maples that are surviving, and the new poplar suckers that are growing. Look at that, they've leafed out real nice. So it's young, it's a young forest, a little messy. I can't wait to see it in the fall, see what the colors do again this year. The white paper birch forest, it's got some suckers down there at the bottom. This first tree here is looking a little bit more like it wants to turn white. But there's our white paper birch forest on the bench. Got a lot of leaves covering up some of those big chops. So you come out front and you don't see the chops quite as uh, prevalent as before. So the white paper birch forest is looking kind of fun. And let's scoot right over to the large forest. Uh-oh, yeah. So the left tree feeling really good. The middle tree, the bottom third feeling really good. But I did notice just today, look at all up here, slower than we'd like, but there is buds on all of these. We are going to make sure that we uh, keep this thing alive. And then the third tree in has some green everywhere in the middle half of the tree. And then way down here at the bottom of this tree, we got a little bit of green popping up off the very bottom of the trunk next to that rock. So that one's still alive. And then the back right one, boy, it's being stubborn. So I'm not sure what's going on with this forest, but it's uh, a little bit of a struggle this year. That's okay. We'll see what stays alive and we'll replant as we need to. The Tamarack forest is still fun. I'm still liking it. Oh, and since I'm right here, Barberry bush, still growing. We'll get rid of that big, uh, big uh, ugly one here down the road. We just want to keep it alive this year. So there is the benches in the backyard with some of the highlights, some of the updates. Ah, I really like the Siberian fir. I like the lean, the growth is good. Got some back buds this year. I can't wait to see it next year. I'm already thinking about next year.
let me introduce you to my brand new bench. I have a new bench with my trees out there. I've got all the collected larch down below, the tamarack. We've got some, uh, there's the blue arrow juniper right in the middle there. This guy right there, surviving all the pruning I did and heavy wiring and the tips are growing, still starting to elongate. Got some Japanese maples in the back that have puffed out real nice. I've got that uh, black pussy willow in the back, new to me this year. Had some super structure. I'm going to cut some of those branches off next year. Just wanted to see where it was going to grow and I'm seeing some back budding, so that's good. Sabina juniper right here. Going to be tall and more um, Boonjing style. We'll get that uh, kind of literati style, the way that one's growing. And then a real fun juniper that came from Mark Youngdale, uh, the former MBS member that passed away. Uh, his is doing pretty good as well. That's really nice. Some fun trees on the new bench. There's the ponds. My original larch. That tamarack's puffed out. It's the closest thing I have to a formal upright. The willows and the log doing pretty well. The Siberian M forests are doing well. Slow but sure, not as fast as I thought. And then I was a little nervous of my nine bark yesterday. My nine bark was a little wilty and I've been watering them, but maybe too much. I got nervous, but they kind of perked up today. There's some dead ones in there, but it perked up and the nine bark's still doing well. Japanese maple, here's my Chinese elm over rock. Getting a little bit harder to see now because of the green grass behind it, but uh, and all the trees. There's another nine bark right over there. I've got my Satsuki azalea that I thought because of the cold frame problems was dead. Look at that growth, everybody. It's not dead. Glory, hallelujah. It's not dead. I am a little sad about the red twig dog dogwood. It's right there in front here. Let's see if I can get that focus for you. Got a couple of leaves on one side and it's not doing well. I don't know what happened to the red twig dogwood, but right next to it is a cutting from it from last year. Look at that cutting from last year. It's more like a tree. That still looks more like a shrub because there's a multi-trunk, but maybe this will be my new red twigged because that one's not doing so well. And the maple. Japanese maple that I believe was grafted onto another Minnesota hardy variety, but I keep it in the cold frame. It came out of the cabin this year and is love and life. The branch on the lower side there, the two that are kind of that sacrificial, that might become the main branch when I do some air layering up here. I'm gonna go ahead and air layer that guy later on this year. Another month or so, in June, I'll be air layering this to get a couple more Japanese maples with this beautiful burgundy color. It's making the cabin look nice and inviting. So there we go. A couple updates for you. Now I do have to talk about one more bug. Do you know what a European pine sawfly is? Well, I had the little caterpillar versions of the sawfly crawling all over my mugo pine. Walking uh, outside looking at my benches today, I noticed how peaked this guy was looking. Look at how they're covering that branch. I, cu I cut that branch right off and I got rid of those. So here you have the European pine sawfly. I had put them in water to drown them, to save them to show you all what they look like. As far as my sources, it seems to be the European style of the sawfly. This is what they did to my branch. So normal leaves on the left, normal foliage. They demolished the stuff on the right. They were all in that branch in that picture I took for you. Yes. They can create some damage. I was told that they don't do the tips as much but they will get your uh, needles, usually the new needles of the year, but sometimes old needles. And they'll lay their eggs and have more, and yeah, then you can lose a whole tree. So never underestimate the spring bugs. Make sure you're looking at your trees carefully. And um, with those, I've been told that they might not work on the tips or the candles of the mugo, which I do think they left alone. 
the tips look pretty good on the dead parts and there's uh, candles everywhere else um, when I came back to look at this about an hour or two later there was one more hanging around I got rid of him and so yep look for those bugs um, spraying them off with the hose uh, soapy water can even work and then I know some people would go ahead and put a little bit of pesticide on uh, their trees to get rid of some of those as well. We're just going to wash this really good with some hose and to make sure there's none of them hanging around anymore. So it seems to be the year of the pest for uh, Dave's Bonsai. And uh, we're going to continue to learn more about them and make sure that we take care of the trees. Well, that does it for another episode of Dave's Bonsai. It's been a while. Haven't shot a video for a while. Getting all prepared for that workshop. A big thanks again to all the Minnesota Bonsai Society newbies, if we can call them that. They've been through their first workshop. Some of them have subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much. They did a fantastic job. Boy, we saw some pretty amazing trees first time out of the gates with these uh, enthusiasts of Bonsai. So super thanks to them and all the volunteers that helped me with Minnesota Bonsai Society. If you're in the area, if you live near Minnesota, uh, connect with us if you can with MBS, Minnesota Bonsai Society. Otherwise, click like, subscribe to Dave's Bonsai, and we'll continue the videos here as we now are on the verge of summertime as we are in the third week of May. So happy bonsai and Take care of you, take care of that bonsai or those bonsai, and we'll see you on the next show. Thank you.